In today's video, I'm taking you with me into three of my closest big box craft stores here in the United States. That's Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and Joanne. And along the way, I'll be sharing with you some of the things that I look for in a big box craft store as it relates to my knitting needs. So get comfortable and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Midweek Ramble. Today we're doing something just a little bit different, and I'm gonna be sharing with you a sneak peek at three of my closest big box craft stores. Each of these craft stores are in my area, and they're easily accessible to me. Michael's is the closest, Hobby Lobby the second closest, and Joanne the third, and they are all three within five miles of my home. This makes them a very accessible option to me when I need to pick up some yarn for a project, some notions for a project, or I just want to go and soak in some possible inspiration. Each of these places have a wide selection of yarns available, however, some more than others. And so what I want to do today is just give you a little glimpse into each of my neighborhood big box craft stores and talk about some of the things that I consider when I choose which one to visit for any particular reason. Now I want to bear something in mind. I know that a lot of folks want to shop small whenever possible. And I always encourage that you shop small businesses and you shop local businesses as much as you can, if you can. However, some of us live in places where local yarn stores are just really not available, me included. We have one local yarn store in the city of Las Vegas. It's not very close to my house. And in my opinion, it has a very small and limited selection and the yarns just really don't strike my fancy. So a lot of times when it comes to shopping local, I I'm left to shop places like Michael's, Joanne, or Hobby Lobby. And I don't think that shopping big box craft stores is a problem. Honestly, it doesn't take very long to drive to them because they're pretty close to you if they are a chain store like Michael's, Joanne, or Hobby Lobby. It's usually a hop, skip, and a jump. You don't have to use up a lot of gas getting there. The yarn is affordable. They have decent selection. And then you're back home with what you need. You didn't spend a ton of money. You didn't have to pay for shipping. You didn't have to have it shipped to your home, which carries its own environmental footprint print if we're going to be going down that avenue of discussion. And so it just makes everything a little bit more simple. And if you're a discerning shopper and you know what to look for when it comes to the quality that you're after, it really is a fantastic option for yarn shopping. So here are just a few things that I like to consider if I were to rank each of these three big box craft stores by how knit or crochet friendly they happen to be. First, the yarn selection. I'm looking for something that has a wide selection of yarn, a decent selection of fleece based natural fibers and a decent selection of cellulose based fibers or plant based fibers like cotton and linen. Typically these kinds of big box craft stores have a very wide selection of man made fibers because those satisfy the needs of the masses. From a marketing standpoint that's essentially why those are primarily what these big box stores carry. They're more affordable, less expensive, and they're more accessible to the masses. However I do want the store that I tend to frequent to have a healthy selection of natural fiber options. I also like the store to have a decent selection of free takeaway patterns. A lot of times these stores will have little takeaway patterns that are pinned up along the collection of yarn that you can tear off and take home if it inspires you. Having a decent selection of these free takeaway patterns just lets you know that it's a little something extra the store is doing to spark some inspiration. And from a marketing standpoint, again, to drive yarn sales. And whether that's a good or bad thing is completely up to you, but it's always nice to have options for free patterns. Another thing I like to see is a really decent notion selection. Nice and organized needle selections, notions, stitch markers, tapestry needles, crochet hooks, all of that. Whether those things are super high quality or not, I like to see that they are organized and they are left out knowing that knitters commonly come to these stores for those things primarily. They need a different size of needle or they need a last minute crochet hook and they need to go pick it up. I like to see that it's organized, displayed nicely, and that there is a decent selection in a range of quality. It's also fun when these big box craft stores have notions and bags and fun things to accessorize the craft beyond just the purely functional stuff. Things that have cute printed patterns or funny sayings or things that we like to have because we're knitters and we want quirky, you know, accessories to go with our craft. If a store has that stuff, you know they're thinking about you on more than just a let me sell you yarn level. They're thinking about you as a crafter and 
they know that you have those quirky little things that you like to have to accessorize your craft. I also like to see a decent book collection. Not a lot of big box craft stores have a decent book collection and you'll find today that really only one sticks out to me as having anything close to a book collection, but I do like to see some books on offer, some pattern books on offer, or even those slim booklets that have like collections of patterns for a particular yarn. I just like to see availability of pattern collections in the form of pamphlets or books. Okay, that's really it. So let's go ahead and take a look at each of these separately. I do have some footage I did film when I went to the shops today. I'm just gonna give you a really quick glimpse at each of these yarn stores because honestly, filming in public is a little uncomfortable. Fortunately, it was not a busy day and so there weren't a lot of people around me, but I do like to keep it discreet and I don't want it to be too detailed and I certainly didn't narrate anything while I was there. So what you're going to see is just a little bit of a visual aid to go along with what I'm telling you here. Okay, so we're gonna start with Michael's first. Michael's, like I said, is the closest one to me. And honestly, it is the first craft store that I remember ever visiting. Um, when I first started visiting craft stores when I was really little with my mom. Um, my aunt used to work at Michael's and so we would go and get things to make various different crafts, floral crafts, holiday crafts. Michael's was always kind of a warm and cozy environment and I really loved going with my mom and shopping for craft supplies. And so it kind of holds this nostalgic place you know, in my memory and in my mind. Now, Michael's has a lot in the way of craft supplies. They're a big place to go if you're into scrapbooking, if you like to do bead work, if you're an artist and you need paint supplies, they're a fabulous place for all of that. However, unfortunately, I feel like fiber arts, knitting and crochet kind of takes a back seat and kind of literally because everything in the realm of fiber arts and needleworking is in the very back corner of the store. They know that their clientele is not primarily knitters and crocheters. However, that doesn't mean that they're not good for knitters and crocheters. It just means that their selection is rather limited and you have to walk all the way to the back of the store to find it. Honestly, a person like me who wants to shop in peace, I kind of like that. I get to go way in the back. It's quiet back there. You don't have a lot of store associates coming around to ask you if you need help. It's kind of, it's just right. It's perfect. It's perfect for me. That's my kind of yarn shopping, if I had to be honest. Okay, when you get back there, one of the things that you notice is they have a lot of these bins in the center of the aisles. Now you're going to notice here in these photos that the yarn selection was really picked over. They were having a 30% off all yarn sale. And actually, if you're watching this when or around the time that I upload it, that sale's going on right now. So if you live someplace where there's a Michaels, it's 30% off all yarn. So the selection was pretty limited, but I want you to imagine these shelves to be much more full because usually when I go visit Michael's, they do have a lot more yarn on the shelves. So what you're seeing here is kind of a real picked over version of what Michael's usually has on offer. When we first got there, I stopped at this big bin that had some Karen cakes in it and they were actually these Karen blossom cakes. I picked one up because I couldn't resist. It's these and it's mostly cotton with a little bit of acrylic and it's kind of like a chainette or blown yarn and it is absolutely gorgeous. They have a really decent selection of Karen Typically, this particular visit was not so because of that sale they have going on, I'm assuming. This one is the colorway Charcoal Carbon. It is the Blossom Cakes and it is 61% cotton and 39% acrylic. I do have plans for this and I'll talk more about that on another video, but I had to pick it up because I just think that this color and the way that it feels, it's so soft. It's just gonna be perfect for something for summer. Now the selection at Michael's is primarily made up of man-made fibers. You're going to find a lot of polyester, a lot of acrylic. However, they do tend to have a pretty decent selection of cellulosic fibers, such as cotton and linen. And sometimes, especially as it gets closer to summer, you find a really great selection of bamboo yarn. I actually had a lot of fun picking out some yarn for a future um, bandana style shawl that I wanna knit. And I wanted to get some yarns in really cool colors colors for that project. This is what I picked up at Michael's. This is by Lion Brand and it is rayon from bamboo and it has a really beautiful luster. Fantastic for warmer weather knits and it is a sport weight and it is beautiful. These colors I want to put together like I said in a crochet um, bandana style shawl and I think they're going to be gorgeous. I had so much fun picking through these. I feel like anytime I ever need 
you know, a cellulose fiber, Michael's always comes to mind as my first go-to. Now, when it comes to wool-based fiber, they are limited to a pretty small selection of Patton's Classic Worsted, Patton's Croy, and occasionally a pretty limited selection of Lion Brand Woolies, which is an 80% acrylic, 20% wool yarn. They just don't carry a lot of the colors in that line of yarn. When it comes to notions, Michael's is really limited. And lately, I feel like they've been picked over and not restocked as often. Often. They do carry the new prim line of needles and crochet hooks and those I really like But other than that their selection of notions is just not very well thought out They don't have a big selection So it's not the greatest place at least my neighborhood Michaels to go if you know exactly what you need Because there is a chance it's not going to be there now all that being said They do carry your basic big box craft store brands. They have the clover crochet hooks and bamboo knitting needles They have the Susan Bates notions all of those things and if you're lucky they do carry wooden swifts if you have a ball winder and you need a swift and they tend to be really good quality as well. In terms of free patterns to take away, Michaels has a pretty decent selection. In fact, they have an entire end cap that is full of free crochet and knitting patterns. Now, the variety of knitting patterns is not huge, but they do have patterns available for you to tear off and take away at your will. In terms of book selection, it's pretty slim pickings. They have them at the very front of the store and they're mixed with a lot of other craft books so you really have to flip to see. I didn't spend a lot of time doing that this time but I've done it in the past and I know that when it comes to knitting books there's a lot of amigurumi and Harry Potter knits. I saw like an Outlander knitting book but it's very um novelty. Nothing that is classic knitting book material in my opinion. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at Hobby Lobby. Now, a lot of you guys recommend that I go to Hobby Lobby and you mentioned that I don't talk about Hobby Lobby very much and that's because I just don't shop at Hobby Lobby very often. Um, and I, I think that's because I'm comfortable with Joanne and I'm comfortable with Michaels, but I have gone to Hobby Lobby in the past for yarn or I've been there for something else and I wander into the yarn section and it is an absolutely fantastic option if you have a Hobby Lobby near you. Now, when you walk into Hobby Lobby, it is very apparent that they are first a home decor store and second a craft store. However, they have both of those things in spades in my opinion. When it comes to yarn and knitting supplies, there are a few things I really really love about them. And then a few things that just tend to make Hobby Lobby a little limited in terms of what I would need. First of all, they carry primarily two brands of yarn. They do have some offshoots that they carry that you'd be familiar with, but the two major brands that they carry, and actually I, I take that back. I think what I'm trying to say is that they have all Hobby Lobby based yarns and each of those yarns have a different name within the umbrella of Hobby Lobby, the Hobby Lobby brand. So you have Yarn B, I love this yarn, and then there's a few others, and they all are under the Hobby Lobby brand. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's just that they don't have a lot of the brands that are outside of the realm of Hobby Lobby to choose from, like Lion Brand or Patton's or Karen or any of these other big box craft store brands that you might be familiar with. So you are limited to that Hobby Lobby brand of yarn. Now, all that being said, that brand and umbrella of brands does have a really decent selection of yarn options. And one thing that they have that the other two craft stores did not have was a small selection of roving. And I thought that this was really cool. As somebody who is embarking on spinning yarn, I have never seen that kind of roving available at a big box craft store. And when I did see it at Hobby Lobby, of course it is kind of an acrylic wool nylon blend. So you're not getting an all wool roving, it did strike me as a really good option for practicing spinning without having to make a huge investment in really nice all wool roving. So that is an option that Hobby Lobby carries that other craft stores just don't carry right now. Within that umbrella of brands of Hobby Lobby yarn, they do have a pretty decent selection of cellulose based yarns. They have a decent mercerized cotton selection. They do have a Pima cotton selection, although I didn't see a lot of that there, but I have seen it in the past and it is a really good quality Pima cotton. They have nice bamboo yarn and they even had a rayon viscose yarn that I thought was really pretty So their cellulose based yarns are definitely available And I might be seeing a lot more of the cellulose based yarns right now because we're moving into spring But it, I do know that they have a decent cellulosic based yarn selection just generally speaking and come to think of it I think that I might have gone at an unfair time for each of these stores as they're moving between lines of yarn right now Probably reducing the amount of wool yarns and increasing the amount of synthetic 
and cellulose based yarns because of the season changing. But all that being said, I didn't see a very big selection of anything beyond synthetic fibers, cellulose based fibers. I saw a little bit of an alpaca blend, but it was a 90% acrylic and 10% alpaca blend. And again, I think this might have something to do with the seasons that we're moving through, but not a lot in the way of natural fibers. If that is something that you tend to look for primarily when you shop for your yarn. One thing Hobby Lobby does have that the other two yarn stores don't typically have is their own line of authentic hand dyed yarn. And these yarns, though they did not have very many when I was there, and I think that might be a seasonal thing. These yarns are made of 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon typically. So they are your typical sock yarn hand dyed. And they do look like hand dyed skeins of yarn. They even put them up in hanks where they're twisted and you have to wind them into cakes yourself. So they do have that going for them. Something that sets them apart from the other two big box craft stores. And if you are into hand dyed yarn, and you wanna have that option available to you, Hobby Lobby has it for you. In terms of free takeaway patterns, they don't have many, but I did happen to find one. I actually picked up this one. It's a shawl and scarf set. This is the shawl, super pretty. And this is the scarf. I thought they were really cute. I'm not like, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'm going head first down the crochet rabbit hole, but I thought this was really cute. And the colors really inspired me. This array of colors are really inspiring me this season, I think. And so I grabbed it because it's free and I love it when they offer free patterns like that for you to grab and take away. It's just that little extra something that kind of gives you a boost to your inspiration. Okay, what Hobby Lobby does have, and I appreciate this, is they have really fun notions for knitters and a very broad selection, not broad, but wide selection. They have fun things for knitters. They have really cute project bags with really fun fabrics. They have notebooks. For example, this one that I picked up while I was there, it is a projects in progress notebook. How cute is this? Everything has a very, um, kind of like honeybee theme to it because that's Hobby Lobby's primary yarn brand is yarn bee. And so you do get those vibes here with the notebook but this is just a project planner. It has a page that gives you information about yarn weights and gauges. It gives you information on needle sizes. And then it's a place for you to keep track of each of your projects. And it gives you lots of different fields to fill in for each of your projects, a place for a photo. It kind of reminds me of like a paper version of Ravelry. These are all of the different things that Ravelry gives you. And I appreciate that it's here in paper. And then it has graph paper if you're creating color work charts, and then dot paper, if you're sketching things out. It's a perfect book to have, and honestly, I feel like it gives me much more um, in the way of usable features than my line of publishing project book does, and I appreciate that it has graph paper. Another thing that I saw that they had was this cute little set of highlighters. Now, if you watched my recent uh, two episodes of the podcast ago, you know the whole thing I'm going through right now with my cable charts. And I talked about all the different things that I use to make reading a chart a lot easier. Well, highlighters is definitely one of them. And what I loved about these is that they're pastel colors and they have these cute little sayings on them. Focus on fiber, make your stash stand out, emphasize your stitch. Yarn is the highlight of my day. So how cute are these? And because they are pastel, I think they would be nice to use with your knitting because they're not so bright and garish. I'm gonna test it really quick. So look at how cute that is. Nice, like pleasant colors for, you know, highlighting your projects so you don't have to have like really bright neon colors on your patterns or whatever. And then they just have lots of other cute stuff too. I like that they have all of the cute notions and they really cater to, you know, the fiber artist and the knitter, you know, we knitters and crocheters that like those quirky accessories to go with our craft. In terms of books, they had zero books. I couldn't find anything. I found a couple of like brochure based knitting pattern books, but I think they maybe it was like learn to knit and crochet Afghans, I can't remember, but 
very little, almost nothing to write home about. Okay, let's head to Joanne. This is the big box craft store that I speak about the most here on the channel. And that's because they have a decent selection of some of my favorite yarns, such as Patton's Classic Wool Worsted, Fisherman's Wool by Lion Brand, and the K and C line of yarn that is exclusive to Joanne. That line of yarn tends to have really nice natural fiber blends, albeit most of them do have acrylic in them. They are a very high quality acrylic and the blends weigh more heavily on the natural fiber in most cases. Now, even though these are the yarns I typically spring for, Joanne has a really wide selection of lots of other yarns that you may need if you're breaking into crochet projects, if you're breaking into blankets, or you're looking for something more affordable and easier to care for. In terms of notions, Joanne is pretty well stocked and things are always really nicely organized. They have your basic big box craft store offerings. The one thing that they do have though is a set of clover interchangeable needles. And I do believe that Michaels carries this as well, but Joann's always has them in stock and you can buy the needle tips separately there as well. In terms of pattern books, they have a small collection of pattern books available in the yarn section at the store. I see very few free pattern options there. And then over in the sewing section of the store, at least at the Joann's in my neighborhood or in my area, they have a big craft book collection. But just like at Michael's, it's kind of a hodgepodge of all kinds of different crafts and you know baking and food preparation and all of this so you really have to hunt and rifle through to find the book that you're looking for for crochet or knitting. I didn't purchase anything at Joanne this time. I was tempted but there was nothing that stood out to me as being any different than what I've seen in my recent visits and I've already purchased enough yarn and so I figured I was gonna leave Joanne empty-handed and I was okay with that. There goes the sun. Do, 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 do. So those are my stomping grounds in terms of the big box craft stores that I visit when I need a quick yarn fix and I don't want to spend a lot of money. I don't want to have it shipped to me. If you're like me and you really don't have any great local yarn stores to visit, these are always really solid options. Now I know a lot of you might be thinking that it is best to try to avoid purchasing from big box stores so as not to give all of our money to the man. And in some ways, I understand where you're coming from. In fact, in a lot of ways, I understand where you're coming from. I am the proud owner of a very small micro business, as I like to call it. So when it comes to shopping small, buying from small businesses and artisanal makers, I absolutely understand and appreciate the value in that. And I encourage it whenever it's possible. But just like anything else, it's important for us to embrace all of the available options that we have because some of those options are just more accessible to some people. And some of those options are just more desirable to a lot of people. And that's absolutely okay. Let me know if you have any big box craft stores in your area. Are they the same as the ones that I have here? And if they are, what are they like on the inside? If you have a Joanne near you, what is it like? Is it different to mine? Do you have a bigger selection? What about Michael's? What about Hobby Lobby? Or if you're in another country, maybe there's a whole nother range of big box craft stores. Let me know what kinds of craft stores you have in your neighborhood that you like to frequent down below in the comment section. I would love to hear more from you. But in the meantime, thank you so much for listening to me ramble on about this today. It was an absolute pleasure. I even got a few goodies as a result and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. If you enjoyed yourself or took value from this video in any way, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and every Sunday. Until Sunday's episode of the Knitting Podcast, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.